I picked up a Creality Ferret 3D scanner and got to it. Let's talk about what a scanning process looks like and what helped me. I started by putting the unit together. There is an option to use it from your Windows or Apple PC or another option to use it with Android phones. Putting it together for PC is super easy. Attach the USB-C cable to the scanner and plug it in to the computer. The scanner has a base that doubles as a power bank and tripod when using it with your phone. Simply attach the power bank to your phone and your phone to the scanner with the included cable to make sure that everything has enough power. Optionally, I use my wife's turntable that she uses when baking cakes. I simply place the object on the turntable and the smooth rotation really makes life easy. If you don't have a turntable, you can also move the scanner itself with similar results or pick up a bearing and make your own turntable. I place the piece on the turntable and while some people use flat black or other various covers for their turntables to be undetected by the scanner, I simply oriented the scanner to not focus on the turntable at all and it delivered great results. The scanning software allows one to select various settings. Select the envelope of the part you'll be scanning, quality, and so on. The scanner can even map colors on the surfaces you are scanning. First, we'll make sure the slider on the left says perfect. If the scanner is too close or too far from your part you're scanning, it will let you know when you should adjust to ensure the best scan possible. You'll notice the two images on the left give you a good view of the orientation of the scanner on the top view and largely what the scanner is seeing at the bottom of the image. Seeing that our part is the perfect distance from the scanner, we can click the play button on the right and you'll see the model, or more accurately, the point cloud that is being built. As we rotate the part, we will find the points being placed in 3D space are a sort of salmon color. This is sometimes referred to as a quality map. As we scan more and more points in these areas, the map will turn from salmon to green, which is what we want. I'll continue turning this part to make sure that the section that I'm scanning is as green as possible. You'll notice we have not scanned the top and bottom of the part. Let's remedy that now. When ready, I can push the pause button to temporarily stop the scan. I'll turn my part sideways and make sure to place a highly green part of our owl friend toward the scanner. As I press the play button and start scanning, you'll find the scanning software will recognize the scan features and reorient the part to the current orientation. And that's why it's important to have a highly green face or highly green section of your part facing the scanner when you hit the play button so it knows how to reorient. As we rotate on the new axis, we can fill in the head of the owl and also the base. And speaking of the base, it is a planar surface. The scanner may not like planar surfaces, but often in my scanning, I find if I can scan the features around the planar surface a lot and then sneak up on the planar surface, it will start scanning. We can reorient the part as needed to scan new areas. So long as the green side is facing the scanner and the scan will orient properly as before. Post-processing in my experience is easy, but it'll be computationally heavy. You can, if you wish, adjust the point pitch for optimization manually. Lowering the point pitch values, in my experience, is good if you have faulty data. Other than that, the default setting works great. When all is complete, you can simply export the model and open it up in whatever supported platform you would like. You have several options and formats to export, but I have always done STL. The easiest kind of object to scan are like the one shown, something that has uniqueness from most angles. Do you remember how parts will sometimes reorient themselves when you change it? If a part looks like the same on multiple sides, it can be more difficult to avoid parts orienting to the wrong side of the part. Not impossible, and I've gotten some good scans from these parts before, but be sure to be aware and proactive about this potential. Parts that are black or overly shiny can be difficult for the scanner to see properly. Using baby powder or a 3D scanning spray can be a big help. The Creality Ferret 
took an object that would take me a long time to model manually and made a quick job of getting me the 3D model. It's easy to use once you get a hang of it, and I had a great time making 3D scans with it. Uh, let's talk in some more videos in the future about how we can edit and change the 3D scans that we've made. If this was helpful, please subscribe. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.